Good afternoon. Oh, that was terrible. Good afternoon. <laughs> All right, that, that was still lame, but I, I'll take it. Uh, I, you know, I found myself nodding my head when Linda was saying that this is a potentially transformative moment. Potentially transformative. Those of us who are students of opinion research, for instance, are really seeing that there is a greater openness amongst the American public for a, a fundamental renegotiation of the social compact, of the relationship between uh, people and our government, between markets and people and the government than most of us have seen in our adult lifetimes. And it extends in some unexpected places. So for instance, there's greater openness across demographic groups uh, and ideological and party affiliations for uh, rehabilitative as opposed to punitive criminal justice sanctions, especially for uh, people who are, are suffering from drug addiction. Uh, that's huge, and it's, it's hugely important for women and girls. The increase in incarceration rates for women and girls over the last 20 years were 800 percent increase, and for women of color, of course, much, much higher. Uh, so it is a potentially transformative moment. Some have compared it to a Roosevelt moment. I think it's uh, potentially more transformative because it could actually include all of us, uh, mm -hmm. w w women and people of color uh, and people with disabilities and the LGBT community and other folks who have been, who were, were not fully included uh, in, in the New Deal. But we could easily blow it. Uh, and there are at least three ways, I'm sure there are a lot more ways that we could blow it, uh, but at least three ways that come to mind for me that we could blow it. And so the, the first is thinking too small. Uh, after years of defensive battles, it's very easy for us in the social justice world to just kind of try to restore things to, to where they were in, in the, the 1990s, uh, to, to look for those small technocratic changes. And those, of course, are crucial, but if we focus only on those, we will have missed the moment. We will we'll have blown it. I think a, a second way is thinking big, but not taking the time to, uh, to explain to the American public uh, and to, to build bridges that create public support so that there's backlash, but that there's a broad backlash that wipes away the gains that we've made. And we've certainly seen that happen many times before. And that has to do with the communication strategy, but it also has to do with building alliances and building a broad-based uh, understanding, kind of telling a common narrative. Uh, and then I think the, the third way we could blow it is uh, thinking only in our different silos of issues, of constituencies, of strategy. You think only of health care, for instance, or I should say health, uh, you, you have silos working on uh, single payer, universal health care, crucially important. There are silos working on women's and reproductive health. There are silos working on racial disparities in health care, uh, et, et cetera. And uh, often we're not all talking to each other even about the subject of health care or about the notion that health is actually determined by a much broader range of, of factors than just health care. Each is necessary but not sufficient. Uh, I think a key to making the most of this moment, to not falling into those traps, is making sure that we start with a focus not on each individual issue on a laundry list, but on vision and values. What, what do we believe in and what are our shared values? What, what are the values we share broadly uh, across our society and, and across our globe? And what's the world that we're trying to build? And starting there allows us to answer each question differently, to think about how constituencies, communities, issues, policies fit together. Uh, and so one very small way, I don't claim to that we've figured uh, out at the Opportunity Agenda how to accomplish that uh, in all ways, but one way that we're looking at is the notion of an opportunity lens. Uh, opportunity for us is not just, uh, the, the kind of the American notion of opportunity is not just a set of conditions, but also uh, fulfillment of a set of values, of equal treatment, of economic security and mobility, of a, a say in, in decisions that affect us, of a, a chance to start over after missteps or misfortune, what some people call redemption, of community, the idea that we're all in it together, that our, our fates are linked, uh, and the idea that fulfillment of those values is not just a good idea, but part of our fundamental human rights, part of the rights that we hold simply by virtue of our humanity. And so one of uh, the projects, something that I know many in the room are working on, does relate to the economic recovery and the economic stimulus and ensuring that that spending occurs uh, on the one hand, that investment occurs on the one hand through the lens of opportunity, but then the, the infrastructure is in place to actually ensure that that's happening on the ground, that when a hospital is built, uh, for example, it's a hospital that serves all communities, that it ensures that women's and reproductive health uh, are, are adequately served for all communities, uh, irrespective of, of income, uh, that looks to where jobs are created and that those jobs are 
uh, across sectors and, and employ women and men of, of different communities. Uh, and to really work with folks on the ground to number one, tell the story so that everyone understands why we're all in it together, why ensuring full and equal access to health care, to transportation, to education is actually good for all of us and good for the nation, uh, and also to ensure accountability, that those many groups on the ground and, and community leaders who are working uh, to make sure that our, our economic recovery is a, an equitable one actually have the tools and strategies and support that they need to make that happen. So let me stop there, but I'm very glad to be here with you today.